Praise the Lord, saints, and welcome back to FFT, Food for Thought Ministries, where we move with purpose in our walk with Christ over here. My name is Rokisha Muhammad, and welcome to my channel. If you're new here, welcome, welcome, welcome. If you've been with me since day one, welcome back, family. This is our weekly Sunday devotion, and we are working out of the book, Experiencing God Day by Day. This is linked in the description box below. So if you want to follow along, feel free to purchase the book. There is the leather bound and also the paperback. So we only do these on Sunday, but you can feel free to do them every single day of the week. So our foundational text for today is found in the book of Mark, chapter 14, verse 27. And we will be reading the whole um, chapter of Mark 14. And our foundational text is right here and it reads then Jesus said to them all of you who run away because it is written my Lord my God and that's not the full text but we will read it so if you have your Bibles go ahead and grab them all right the Bible that I'm using today is the everyday life Bible okay and it is the commentary by Joyce Myers and it is in the Amplified Translation because that is my favorite translation. So turn with me to Mark chapter 14 because that's what we're going to start reading today. We're going to read the full chapter of Mark 14. Then we're going to come back to the devotion and read through the whole devotion through one single time then we're going to come back a second time and do our underlining our highlighting and pulling out any nuggets um, with my commentary with the leading of the holy spirit all right so are you guys ready i'm gonna pray us in and then we're going to get into the reading of the word so let me just put this to the side all right you guys let's pray in so we can get started on our lesson now, let me see do we have any let me look and see if we have okay we do have a sidebar right here this is what I call them the little sidebars and then this is dealing with chapter 14 as well so we're gonna read this life point oh this one is kind of long today family so let's get started let's get started so we have two sidebars a life point and we have the meaning of communion so let's go to mark chapter 14 all right so let's pray in <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord God, for the opportunity to come before you today to study your word. We thank you right now, Lord God, for your mercy and grace, for this is the day that you have made, and we will be glad and rejoice in it. I thank you, Heavenly Father, for forgiving us for all of our sins, Lord God. We ask that you forgive us of all of our sins, known and unknown. We also ask for our spiritual eyes to be open and for our spiritual ears to be open so that we can hear, Lord God. We ask for our hearts to be purged of anything that is not like you lord god anything that is separating us from you father god we ask that you purge it out of our hearts circumcise our hearts lord god so that we can receive this word wholeheartedly in our hearts father god it's for us not to just observe the word but to also be doers of your word we also ask right now heavenly father for you to descend upon us your divine spirit of wisdom your spirit of knowledge your spirit of clarity your spirit of understanding your spirit of revelation and your spirit of discernment father god as we decrease may you increase holy spirit you are welcome in this place have your way and teach us today in the mighty and matchless name of Yeshua HaMashiach. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Are you ready, family? Let's get it. Let's get into this word. I'm excited about it. I hope you guys are having a beautiful and blessed Sunday. <coughs> so let's get into it. We are starting in Mark chapter 14. And we're going to read through this word. We're going to chew on this word. We're going to underline and highlight this word. So I hope you got your Bibles out. Okay, get your Bibles out and turn with me again to Mark chapter 14. So let's go. And our topic, what did I say it was? Facing failure. Facing failure. So let's go ahead and read chapter 14. 
and it says here it was now two days before the Passover and the festival of the unleavened bread and the chief priests and the scribes were searching for a deceitful way to arrest Jesus and kill him whoa all right so let me get my um highlighters out because I want to highlight some stuff that I'm reading uh -oh. sorry y'all so it says here it was now two days before the Passover so it's two days before the Passover okay and the festival of the unleavened bread got it and the chief priests and the scribes so these are the people who studied the Torah were searching for a deceitful way look at here they were searching for a deceitful way to arrest Jesus and kill him now you know that is not okay so I'm just gonna highlight two days Passover these were the chief priests and scribes that were doing this what were they doing searching for a deceitful way to arrest Jesus and kill him so that's pretty clear then it goes on to say but they were saying quote not during the festival for the people might riot so they knew that people were following Jesus Christ so they said not during the festival they did not want to do it during the festival of what the um, unleavened bread festival okay because they said what the people might riot so they knew they were trying to do something deceitful and wrong and they did not want the people to riot so they said not during this time all right so that's standing out to me let's keep going while he was in Bethany as a guest at the home of Simon the leper and re and reclining reclining at the table reclining reclining at the table a woman came with an alabaster viral a very closely I mean a very costly I'm sorry and precious perfume of pure nard and she broke the vial and poured the perfume on his head so this he is Jesus right we know the story about the alabaster box that she came with a vial of a very costly and precious perfume so this perfume cost a lot of money so let's read it again while he who is he Jesus was in Bethany as a guest uh-huh at the home of Simon so he was at Simon's home who was with the leper and reclining at the table a woman came with an alabaster viral vial my bad of very costly and precious perfume of pure nard and she broke the vial and poured the perfume over his head his head is who Jesus okay so I have let me get another color so I have the understanding that Jesus is chilling at Simon Peter's house I mean Simon Peter at Simon's house so Jesus is chilling at Simon's house okay he's reclining at the table and this woman comes in with her alabaster viral a very costly perfume of pure nard and she broke the vow and poured the perfume over his head whose head Jesus head okay so we got it good let's keep moving but there were some who were um, indignantly remarking to one another why has this perfume been wasted Wow so they're saying this perf why are you wasting this perfume on this man but there were some who were indignantly remarking so they was talking about why is she wasting this perfume why has this perfume been wasted my Lord my God they was asking her why are you wasting this perfume on this man which was Jesus right why is this perfume being wasted because they knew it was a costly perfume let's keep going hallelujah thank you Jesus 
It says, for this perfume might have been sold for more than 300 denarii. Is that how you spell that? Denarii. A laborer's wage for most almost a year. Woo! That's how much that perfume was worth, y'all. Look at that. A year's worth of wage. Almost a year worth of wage. That's how much, uh, um, what does it say a denarii is? It says, for this perfume might have been sold for more than 300 denarii, which is what? A laborer's wage for almost a year and the money given to the poor. And they scold her. So they was mad. So they scold her for wasting that perfume that could have been sold. And they said, that you just pouring this on this man's head. And this could have been, you could have sold it and gave it to the poor. All right, we got it. Good. So we're following along. This is, I don't got to chew too much on this. It's pretty clear here. We know that it was worth 300 denarii. It was worth um, almost a year's wage. And they was scolding her because they said that money could have been given to the poor if she had sold it amen so let's keep going but jesus said come on somebody but jesus said let her alone basically leave her alone why are you bothering her and causing trouble she has done a good and beautiful thing to me come on somebody come on god said leave her alone let her alone why are you bothering her and causing trouble? She has done a good and beautiful thing to me. This is beautiful. This is beautiful. Jesus stood up for her. I'm just going to highlight all this. I'm just going to highlight it all because that's good. Well, it's all good, but you know what I mean. Come on. Y'all got it? Okay, let's move on. Then it says, for you always have the poor, for you always have the poor with you. And whenever you wish, you can do something good to them, but you will not always have me. This is very, 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 very important. Just from reading other scriptures, this is very important family. So I hope you take a note here. Some Bibles say, for the poor will always be with you, right? But this is the Amplified. And it says, for you always have the poor with you. This is Jesus speaking, right? It's quoted. So I'm sure that if you had red letter, this is in the red letter. It's saying, for you always have the poor with you. And what I have learned from reading scripture, why are we going to always have the poor with us? Because technically, our wealth is tied to the poor family and we always say well we can wish um um that we can all we can save all the people and 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 there will be no poor no poor people it's always going to be poor people why because scripture told us there will be scripture says the poor will always be with us and the reason being is because our wealth is tied to the poor and the way that we give directly to god and our giving is giving to the poor the scripture says that God is at the right hand of the poor. He's at the right hand of them. So when you see them homeless, transients, bums, whatever you want to call them, God is at the right hand of them. And that is who we are to give to, according to the New Testament. And of course, you give to your church too, but you don't have to pay a tithe. We already was clear on that on the last lesson, right? For God is saying, for you are all, it says, for you always have the poor with you. So the poor is going to be with us forever. They're going to always, circle that always, circle always. The poor will always be with us. And whenever you wish, come on, and whenever you wish, you can do something good to them. Whenever you wish. You can always do something good for the poor. Why? Because they're going to always be with us. Our wealth is tied to the poor. You want to give to God? 
you give to the poor. That's throughout the whole New Testament. God speaks of giving to the poor, to the widow, to the orphans. Give to a person that is less fortunate, right? Give to a person that is less fortunate than you, right? That's how we give to God is by giving to the poor. The scripture also tells us that when we, that when we give to the poor, we will never lack. Listen to that principle. When you give to the poor, you will never lack. If you have lack in your life, it's because you're not giving to the poor. Straight up, because it's the principle. He said, when you give to the poor, you will never lack. Come on, somebody. So if you're lacking, step up your giving to the poor. Hallelujah. 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 Scripture. I'm not making it up. Somebody can put it in the comments. Give to the poor. You will lack nothing. You will never lack when you give to the poor. So start giving to the poor so you can get out of that lack. Let's read it again. For you always have the poor with you. So we're going to always have the poor with us. Our wealth is tied to the poor family. You got to understand that. I did a whole study on this too. Our wealth is tied to the poor. And whenever you wish, you can do something good to them. But you will not always have me. The Lord is basically letting them know I'm not going to always be here. So she's doing what she can while I'm here. Right? Have you ever heard that saying? Give them their flowers now, not when they're dead. Let them smell the roses now. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Okay, let's go. Then it says, She has done what she could. She has anointed my body beforehand for the burial listen listen she has what anointed my body beforehand for the burial come on she has done what she could because they didn't do nothing but sitting over there murmuring complaining trying to think of a deceitful way to try to kill him so they was hating they was hating she has done what she could, Jesus said. She has anointed my body beforehand for the burial. So she's making sure he's smelling good, right? She's making sure he's felt smelling good. Let me just go ahead and highlight these underlines. I don't know how y'all marketing your Bible, but do what you do. I just like my Bible to be colorful and pretty. Okay, here we go. And it says, I assure you, and most solemnly say to you, whenever the good news regarding salvation is proclaimed throughout the world, what she has done will be told in memory of her. Come on. And we're reading about it right now. We are reading about this woman right now. So this is true. He prophesied it and we are reading it right now, even though we don't know her name, but it is being told. It is being told in memory of her. Come on, somebody. Come on. Prophecy fulfilled. Prophecy fulfilled. It says, I assure you. Come on. And most what solemnly say to you. Whew, whatever the good news regarding salvation is proclaimed throughout the world. What she has done will be told in memory of her and we and we telling the story right now we're reading the story right now glory be to god let's highlight this the lord assured us and he solemnly said whenever the good news hallelujah what regarding salvation is proclaimed when you're going out telling the story of salvation throughout what the world what she has done will be told in memory of her my god my god and we're reading about it right now she was preparing perfumed him up preparing him for his burial let's read let's continue it says then judas i so i i don't know how to say this it's car right it's cariot y'all see that word then judas is cariot who was one of the 12 disciples went to the chief priests to betray Jesus to them. Mm, mm, mm. 
So this is J Judas, the disciple. That was clear. I'm glad that the Amplified cleared that up for me because I was like, I ain't never heard that name, but I know Judas. So it says, then Judas, it's a, y'all see it, <laughs> who was one of the 12, 12 disciples went to the chief priests to betray Jesus to them. So now he going so he can go and get some money. So Judas is going to the chief priests. Come on. To tell them who Jesus is because you know we read up in the beginning that they was trying to do something to deceive him no that was the foundational text my bad that they wanted to do something to kill him and be deceitful about it right they were searching for a deceitful way to arrest and kill Jesus so who who was gonna have a hand in that Judas Judas one of the 12 disciples your own people your own people right which was one of the disciples went to the chief priest to betray Jesus to them. <sighs> he went to go betray him. This is how your own people do you. You see, even if they, they did it to Jesus, because what this topic is called, what? Facing failure. Let's keep going. Then it says, when they heard this, they were delighted. Mm, mm, mm. And promised to give him money. So, oh my God, my God. When they heard this, who heard this? The chief priests heard this. They were delighted because they wanted to get him. We want to arrest him and kill him anyway. So thank you for that information. Please show us where he is. And then because Judas went, told them, I know where Jesus is. Okay, I'm here to betray him. They promised him money. They promised to give him money, family. And he began looking for an opportune time to portray Jesus. So he was in on it. You know, Satan was working through him. Satan was working through him. Satan was working through him. Let's read it one more time. When they heard this, who heard it? The priest. This, when they heard this, they were delighted. Look at that. And what promised to give him money who money Judas and he began looking for an opportune time to portray Jesus so now he's looking for an opportune time when is a good time when is a good time for me to do this thing right so it says on the first day of the festival come on the first day of the festival of of what the unleavened bread so this is the festival of the unleavened bread because we know it was passover right it says when as was customary okay they sacrificed the passover lamb his disciple asked him where do you want us to go and prepare for you to eat the passover so this is going about to be the Lord's Supper, right? The Last Supper, not the Lord's Supper, but the Last Supper. Let's read it again. So it says, on the last day of the festival of the unleavened bread, when as was customary, so this was a custom that they did for the Passover, it says they sacrificed the Passover lamb. His disciples asked him, where do you want us to go and prepare for you to eat the Passover. So I'm just going to highlight Passover. That's standing out to me. They wanted to know. Uh, where are we going to go? Where do you want us to go? And prepare. So he, they're asking for a place. To go. To prepare to eat for the Passover meal. Okay. That's what I'm getting from that. Which was a um, part of the sacrifice. For the Passover lamb which we know that's Jesus now, right? He is the lamb. My God, hallelujah. Okay, let me highlight this up real quick. You want us to go to prepare you to eat the Passover. Okay, good. So they wanna know where we going to set up for you to eat. All right, let's go. So it says, and he sent two of his disciples saying to them, Jesus speaking, go into the city and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. 
follow him. You see how God gives direct instructions? He didn't even tell him the man name. He said, look for the man with the jar of water will meet you. Follow him. So let's let's follow, let's look at these instructions. And he sent two of his disciples. They didn't say which two saying to them what go into the city and a man what carrying a jar of water will meet you. And what are they to do? Follow him. Those were some clear instructions. Clear instructions. Go to the city. There you will find a man carrying a jar of water. He will meet you. Follow him. So God gave them some clear instructions because they asked on how they're going to prepare, right, for the Passover. So he's telling them, go into the city and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him. All right. Got it. Good. So let's keep going. And say to the owner of the house, he enters. The teacher asks, which is Jesus, where is my guest room in which I may eat the Passover with my disciples? Wow. So they're going to this man's house. They're going into this man's house. Who's the owner? The man who was holding, I mean, the man who's going to be carrying this water. That's the man's house they're going to. So let's read it again. And he says to the owner of the house, he enters. The teacher asks, this is what the disciples are saying. The teachers act, the teacher asks, where is my guest room in which I may eat the Passover with my disciples, my Lord, my Lord. All right, let's go. We just chewing today, just a little. And it says, he will show you a large upstairs room, the upper room. <laughs> He will show you a large upstairs room, unfurnished and ready, with carpet and dining couches. Prepare the supper for us there. Come on, they asked. He gave them instructions on where the Passover meal will take place. So this is good. This is good. I don't know. Uh, the word of God is just always good to me. Let me get another color. Let me get another color. Okay. We're going to do what? Let's start back over with this purple. My Lord, my God. So he gave them instructions on where they were going to eat their Passover supper. So it says, he will show you a large upstairs room. Okay. That's going to be furnished and ready with carpet and dining couches. Come on. Prepare the supper for us there. So they asked the question way up here, where should we go? He gave them and shut, he gave them instructions and told them where to go. Okay. So we know that the Passover meal is going to be prepared in this man's house who have was carrying the jar of water upstairs. And there's going to be, it's all going to be already set up and ready with carpet and dining couches. Come on family. Woo. Come on. It says the disciples left and went to the city and found everything just as he had told them and they prepared the Passover. So that's pretty clear. So the disciples did what? They obeyed. They obeyed. It said that they did everything just as he had told them. I'm seeing obedience here. I'm seeing obedience. That's what's standing out to me. Obedience. The disciples left uh huh, and went to the city, like he told them, and found everything just as he had told them. And they prepared the Passover. Boom. Boom. That's crystal clear. When it was evening, he came with the 12 disciples. While they were reclining at the table, Jesus said, so this will be read in your Bible if you have a red letter. Jesus said, I assure you and most solemnly say to you that one of you will betray me. Ooh, ooh, uh-oh, it's getting good. It's getting juicy. It's word getting juicy. I assure you and most solemnly say to you that one of you will betray me. 
one who was eating with me. Woo. Come on. I just love the word of God. Don't y'all? Don't y'all just love it? I'm just going to hide out all this because this is all good to me. While they were reclining, Jesus said, What I assure you and solemnly say to you, that one of you will betray me, one who was eating with me. So your enemy is at the table with you. Come on. It says, They begin to be grieved. They begin to be grieved and deeply distressed. And to say to him, one by one, Surely not I. <laughs> they was grieved and distressed. Let me circle that. They were grieved and distressed. Okay. All right. Let me highlight that. They were grieved and distressed. And to say to him, who, they, who was him? Jesus one by one so each one of his disciples were saying surely not i like i'm not the one that's going to betray you I, not me not me not me so they all were saying it one by one one by one let's go let's read and he replied it is one of the 12 disciples one who was dipping bread in the bowl with me Woo! he being specific and he replied it is one of the 12 disciples, one who was dipping, he was specific, bread in the bowl with me. Mm, 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 mm. You up there dipping your bread, you, you up in there dipping your bread with me. I'm just gonna highlight all that. It's, 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 it's all good, okay? Come on, let's read. For the Son of Man goes to the cross uh oh just as it is written in scripture of him who jesus but woe to the man by whom the son of man is betrayed Ooh, that sound like a curse Ooh, that sound like a curse to me it says for the son of man goes to the cross so he's letting them know jesus is the son of man the, for the Son of Man goes to the cross. He's getting ready to go to the cross. Just as it is written. Okay? It is already written. The prophets already talked about it. In scripture. Of him. Who? Jesus. But woe to that man. Mm, circle that. But woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. My Lord. My God. It would have been good for that man if he had not been born listen listen Ooh -wee. Ooh -wee. come on mm, 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 mm. he said it would be good for that man if he had not even been born y'all see this he said whoa to the man whom the son of man is betrayed it would have been good for that man if he had not been born y'all see that y'all see that let's keep going let's keep going you can't tell me this ain't good while they were eating jesus took bread and blessed it giving thanks and praises so what did he do bless the food and it says and he broke it and gave it to them and said, take it, uh-huh, this is my body, glory be to God. And when he had taken a cup of wine and given thanks, so he gave thanks over the wine, this is communion, he gave it to, let me just highlight this, so this is, he going into the um, communion right now. This is a this is an ordinance, right? This is called communion that they're doing right now. This is something that we still practice today. Communion. My Lord, my God. Okay. Let's come over here. 
he said he he already broke he gave the wine he blessed it wait a minute see what it says he blessed it and gave it to them and they all drank from it all of them drank from it and he said to them this is my body of the new covenant my god my blood which is being poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins listen to that let's let's chew on this for a second let's chew on this for a second this is so good hallelujah hallelujah and he said to them quote this is my what body i mean this is my blood of the new covenant this is the blood that he was about to shed on that cross of the new covenant my blood uh-huh which is being what poured out for many for the forgiveness of sin so that's why i said drink i mean take communion in remembrance of him right in remembrance of what that he shed his blood which started the new covenant for the forgiveness of our sins we are to do this in remembrance of him remembering that he shed his blood for this new covenant that we are under for the forgiveness of our sins hallelujah hallelujah thank you jesus thank you jesus thank you jesus he said i assure you and most solemnly say to you, I will not drink again of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. Woo! This is heavy. This is heavy. And I'm loving it. I'm loving it. He said, I assure you and most solemnly say to you, I will not drink again of the fruit of the vine so he's not going to be drinking any more wine the fruit of the vine i'm i'm assuming that that's wine right fruit from a vine grapes are on the grapevine right fruit of the vine until that day when i drink it new in the kingdom of god i will not drink again of the fruit of the vine meaning in the natural until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. He's basically, I'm not going to be drinking no more wine from the vine until I go back home to the kingdom of God. Drink it in new. Drink it new in the kingdom of God. Let's read that again. Holy Spirit, speak to us. Talk to us, Holy Spirit. Talk to us. I assure you. And most solemnly say to you, I will not drink again of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. Glory be to God. Let's go. Let's go. Then it says, after they had sung hymns, so they were giving praise, singing hymns, they went out to the Mount of Olives standing out to me jesus said to them you will all fall away uh-oh and be ashamed and be afraid to be associated with me as disciples listen i think this is is this what is our scripture sorry y'all yep this is it this is our scripture right here see mark 14 27 that's it this is it this is our this is our foundational text right here this is our foundational text it says jesus said to them you will all fall away listen you will all fall away and be ashamed not just ashamed but afraid to be associated with me as disciples come on because it is written listen it is written i will strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered my lord and the sheep will be scattered and then it says 
But after I have been raised from the dead, I will go ahead of you to Galilee. After I have been raised, after I have been raised from the dead, come on, come on. I will go ahead of you to Galilee. I will go ahead of you to Galilee. Come on, look, he, he talking, he prophesied, he prophesied. Let me read that one more time. I will strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. Woo. So the scattered is going to be, he said, once I'll get gone, get gone. That ain't the word. But once, <laughs> once I leave up out of here, the sheep, y'all is going to be scattered. Y'all going, y'all going to be ashamed of me. Y'all going to fall away, right? I will strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. The sheep, who's the sheep? The followers. The, sh the sheep will be scattered but after I have been raised listen after I have what been raised from the dead I will go ahead of you to Galilee mm, mm, mm. and is that where they met him at when they when he when they witnessed him alive again when he rose on the third day they met him in Galilee come on now come on come on let's keep reading and then it says but Peter said to him even if they all fall away and desert you ashamed and afraid of being associated with you yet i will not do so so peter is saying not me not me peter is bold in saying that right he said even if they he said he ain't including himself in that he said even if they all fall away and desert you ashamed and afraid of being associated with you yet i will not do so i will not do so so peter is saying i'm not gonna i'm not gonna be ashamed i'm not gonna fall away they can fall away but i'm not gonna fall away i will not desert you i will not be ashamed and i will not be afraid of being associated with you he said yet i will not do so so he's claiming telling the lord I'm not going to be one to fall away. Then it says, Jesus said to him, <laughs> check this out. Jesus said to him, I assure you <laughs> and mostly solemnly say to you this very night, this very night before a rooster crows twice, before a rooster crows twice, you will deny that you even know me three times. Let me just, I got to mark this, y'all. <laughs> eek, 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 eek. Jesus said, come on, Peter. I know you, man. I know the beginning from the end. Let me tell you, I know that's the intent of your heart. But once they take me, uh-uh. You're going to deny me, brother. You're going to deny me. Just let me just tell you right now. Jesus said to him what? I assure you. And I would most solemnly say to you, this very hour, Peter, this very hour, Peter, before a rooster crows twice, you will deny that you even know me. Not once, not twice, but three times. <laughs> three times you're going to deny me. Three times. Three times while you up here talking about not me, not me. Mm, mm, mm. Not me, not me. A lot, a lot of people, I'll die. I'll die for the Lord. I'll die for Jesus. Let somebody put a bullet gun to your head and tell you to renounce him. What you gonna do? You gonna renounce him and take the bullet and die as a martyr? Or are you gonna what? Deny Jesus. My Lord, my God. Because that's basically what was happening. That was, that was what's happening. It says, but Peter kept saying insistently. But Peter kept saying insistently if i have to die with you listen don't people say that people say that all the time i will not deny you but peter kept saying insistently but peter kept saying insistently if i have to die with you i will not deny you he said y'all put that in the comments if i have to die with you I will not deny you. Put that in the comments, family. That's our comment of the day. If I have to die with you, 
I will not deny you. That's the comment of the day. I'm going to make that pink. That's the comment of the day. If I have to die with you, I will not deny you. Glory be to God. Glory. That should be our heart, though. That should be our heart. That should be our heart. Amen. And they all were saying the same thing as well. That should be our heart. That should be our heart. That's where we should be. Right? Come on. Then they went to a place called Gethsemane. They went to Gethsemane. And Jesus said to his disciples, sit down here until I have prayed. So he told them to sit down until I have prayed. He took Peter and James and John with him. So who did he take? He took Peter, he took James, and he took John with him. And he began to be deeply distressed. Who? Jesus was deeply distressed and troubled. Which is what? Extremely anguished at the prospect of what was to come. Listen. Can you imagine the Lord all God? The Lord God Almighty, our Father, was distressed and troubled? Extremely anguished at the prospect of what was to come. So the, re the realization set in, right? He started feeling the weight of all that sin. Bars. Come on, somebody. The distress and trouble and the anguish, the realization of what was about to take place. He was about to fulfill his assignment that he came for. He was about to feel, fulfill his assignment. Prophecy was about to be fulfilled. My Lord, my God. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So we know that he took Peter, James, and John with him. And, th and then it said he began to be deeply distressed and troubled. He was anguished about the prospect of what's to come. So the realization set in. The realization started to set in. And he said to them, quote, my soul is deeply grieved and overwhelmed. So his soul listen his soul jesus soul is deeply my god i'm circling all this and overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death remain here and keep watch my lord my god my lord my god and he said to them my soul is deeply grieved and overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death remain here and keep watch so he said remain here and keep watch he's feeling some type of way y'all not some type of way it's telling us what what type of way he was feeling he was already feeling and he said this is his soul feeling this way his soul his mind his will his intellect was deeply grieved it was overwhelmed with sorrow with sorrow to the point of death he was ready to die remain here and keep watch so he like whoo it's coming on me. I'm feeling it, right? I'm feeling this pressure. The sins of the world, not just not just their sin, but the sin of the whole world, the people who were born and not born yet, and the ones that still ain't born, he bore it all. He was bearing all our sin. One who never knew sin, family. One who never knew sin was boring the whole sin of the world in one man. My God, my Lord, thank you, Jesus. He said, after going a little farther, he fell to the ground Ooh, with all the pressure. He fell to the ground, distressed by the weight of his spiritual burden. Jesus, hallelujah. Look at this. He fell to the ground. Ooh, glory be to God. And after a little farther, my God, he fell to the ground. Look at this. Distressed by the weight of his spiritual burden. It was a spiritual burden he was carrying. Glory be to God. Listen, I don't don't start crying, Rokisha. I'm not gonna cry. I'm not gonna cry. <sighs> Let me pull it together. After going a little further, he fell to the ground. Listen. Distressed by the weight of his spiritual burden, he began to pray that if it was possible, my Lord, in the Father's will, 
the hour of suffering and death for the sins of mankind listen my pass from him he's like i'm ready to give up this assignment he was trying to fall away okay he was trying to fall away he was like this is too much this is a lot this is a lot of pressure the reality is setting in this spiritual burden that i'm carrying father he said if it is any way possible he began to pray and begin to pray family he began to pray that if it were possible my lord my god in the father's will if it's possible in your will father the hour of suffering and death for the sins of mankind listen we were still rejecting them we were still enemies of the lord still want to be independent still want to do what he do and he said i'm going to glory be to god the sins of mankind i don't know no sin father but i'm about to take this on i'm about to take this on so that they may live i'm gonna die so that they may live glory be to god mm, mm, mm. jesus hallelujah you know i'm not crying i'm not gonna cry Whew. let's keep going let's keep going this is just so good to me and it says he was saying abba father Ooh, glory be to God. He was saying, Abba, Father, glory be to God. Abba, Father. Put that in the comments. Abba, Father. All things are possible for you. All things are possible for you. Take this cup of judgment, glory be to God, away from me. But not what I will, but what you will in the distress my lord in the distress in the grief in the anguish in the overwhelmingness he said abba father all things are possible he said you can do whatever you want father he said take this cup of judgment my lord my god thank you father thank you jesus take this cup of judgment away from me mm, mm, mm. Take this cup of judgment away from me, but not what I will, but what you will. Glory be to God. He knew he had to do it, family. Ooh, let me clear my eyes. I'm, I'm not crying. Nope. Oh, my God. And he came back and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? <laughs> <laughs> came back he stressed out he anguished he, he grieved he asked the lord to take the judgment from him and he came back and found them sleep family they sleep and he bearing the sins of the world spiritually right he said let <laughs> me read it again and he came back and found them sleeping and he said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Asking the question. Were you unable to keep watch for one hour? You can't stay up for one hour to pray with me, right? To keep watch because they coming after him, right? You know, Judas already betrayed him and he already knew the time had come after the supper. So he said, keep watch, keep watch, keep watch the lord know they was coming he said are you unable to keep watch for one hour he found them sleeping y'all he said are you asleep <laughs> <laughs> he said keep actively watching and praying so that you do not come into temptation listen he's giving them instruction he said keep actively keep actively watching and praying so that you do not come into temptation the spirit is willing come on the spirit is willing my god my god the spirit is willing but the body my lord god is weak the spirit is willing family the spirit is always willing, but that flesh, got to kill that funky flesh. But that flesh is willing, but the body is weak. He went away again and prayed, saying the same words. 
and again he came back and found again he came back and what found them sleeping he went away again and came back and found them sleep again listen they would sleep again they couldn't even stay up for one hour he said because their eyes were very heavy and they did not know how to answer him he came back a third time and said to them are you still sleeping <laughs> he came back three times family and they were still sleeping he said are you still sleeping and resting enough of that <laughs> he like i'm i need this is the time i need y'all the most this is the time i need y'all the most i need y'all to be interceding for me right now i'm under pressure the the scriptures is about to be fulfilled can you just pray and watch for me have my back intercede for my strength right he came back a third time family and said to them are you still sleeping and resting enough of that enough of that. <laughs> enough of that get it's time to go get nah if y'all walking you can't sleep and walk but i guess you can't sleep walk <laughs> i'm just saying enough of that he said enough of that the hour has come look the son of man is being betrayed into the hands of sinners get up let's go <laughs> oh i love jesus i love him 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 he said enough of that the hour has come i'm just gonna highlight this whole thing the hour has come look the son of man is being betrayed don't you see into the hands of the sinner get up let's go look my betrayer is near Come on. He like, come on, we got to move. They on they on the move. We got to move. They on the move, so we got to move. They coming for me. <laughs> they coming for me. My Lord, my God. And at once, while he was still speaking, Judas is Sakarit, one of the disciples, one of the 12 disciples <sighs> came up with him a crowd of men with swords and clubs who came from the chief priests, the scribes and the elders of the, of the Sanhedrin, Sanhedrin, whatever that is, Sanhedrin, from the elders of the Sanhedrin. Okay. Then it says, now the betrayer had given them a signal saying, whomsoever I kiss, he is the one sees him and lead him away safely under guard so they were saying now the betrayer has given them a signal so judas told the high priest and the chief and all those men that was with them he said i'm gonna give you a sign the one that i kiss that's gonna be the one that's the messiah that's the one you want to take right so it says now the betrayer judas had given them a signal saying whomever i kiss this is the this is the signal quote whoever i kiss he is the one okay so judas is told to hide the, the chief priest whoever i kiss he is the one whomever i kiss he is the one seize him and lead him away safely under guard so you gonna have to have some guards with you right sees him for he is he's the one that's him the one who i kiss look for the one that i kiss he's the one you need to seize my lord my god he's the one sees him and lead him away under guard my god my god then it says when judas came immediately he went up to jesus and said rabbi which is master exclamation point and he kissed him forcefully what Come on now. So they had to know this is him. Mwah! <laughs> okay. He kissed him, probably kissed him so hard his head went back, right? You know how you get a kiss? So you like dog. When Judas came, immediately he went up to Jesus and said, Rabbi. And he kissed him. Mm, mm, mm. What? Forcefully. They laid hands on him and seized him. So they laid hands on him and seized him. My Lord, my God. 
but one of the bystanders, which was Simon Peter, drew his sword and struck the slaves of the high priest and cut off his ear. My Lord, my God. Come on, Peter. Now you woke now, huh? You woke now, huh? So the slave of the high priest and cut off his ears. With the, there was a bystander, Simon. Simon Peter drew his sword and struck him. Cut off his ear, right? Cut off his smooth, cut his ear smooth off. <laughs> Get back. Why are you trying to seize my Jesus? Trying to seize my, um, my, my, um, my savior? Come on, this is my teacher here. Let me just highlight all this stuff up here, y'all. My stuff, okay? And then it says here, Jesus said to them, have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me? So he asked them, as you would against a robber? He's like, I'm not a robber. Jesus said to them, have you come out with swords and clouds to arrest me? Okay. As you would against a robber? Day after day, I was with you teaching in the courts and porches of the temple and you did not seize me. So he like, why are you coming to me now? He said, day after day, day after day, I was with you. What? Teaching in the courts and porches of the temple and you did not seize me. So he's like, why are you trying to arrest me like I did something wrong? He's like, why are you trying to arrest me like I did something wrong? You didn't seize me then, but this has happened so that the scriptures would be fulfilled. Come on, Lord, let them know. Let them know the scriptures need to be fulfilled. Hallelujah. The scriptures need to be fulfilled. He said, I've been with y'all, been in your face day after day. I was with you, what? Teaching in the courts and porches of the temple and you did not seize me. But this has happened. Why? So that the scriptures, hallelujah, would be fulfilled. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Then all of his disciples abandoned him and fled. Look, <laughs> this is where it happened. Right here. Right here is where they fled, y'all. This is where they fell away. <laughs> this is where they fell away. Let me put right here. Fell away. Left Jesus. Come on. They left. <laughs> they left him. That's not funny, but I'm just saying. He told them that they would. He said, I solemnly assure you, y'all gonna <laughs> y'all gonna be out. Y'all gonna be out. Y'all ain't sleep now. You is not sleep now. Then all of his disciples abandoned him and fled, y'all. Ain't the listen. What color I need to what color is this gonna be? Mm, mm, mm. <sighs> they all what y'all Bible say? It says they and then all of the all of his disciples abandoned him and fled. A young man was fo following him, wearing only a linen a linen sheet over his naked body. So we got one young man who was following him, wearing only a linen sheet over his naked body, and some men seized him. But pulling free from the linen sheet, he escaped from them naked. He escaped. <laughs> He ran around. He, he he bust loose from the sheet. He got away. Bust loose. The whole sheet came off of him. And he was naked. Ready, running down down the way. I ain't gonna say down the street. Because I don't, you know, you know, it was probably y'all, yeah. Y'all know what it was looking like. Dusty and they up in the mountains and stuff in the rocky terrains and looking all they was in Gethsemane. Come on. The man ran away. He said, but he pulled free from the linen sheet and he escaped from them naked. The man ran naked. It says, they led Jesus away to the high priest and all the chief priests and the elders and the scribes and Sandrian. Uh, okay, y'all in there. And Sandrian, Jewish high courts gathered together. And then it says, Peter... Let me see. And Peter had followed him at a distance right into the courtyard. So Peter is watching. He, he followed them from a distance right into the courtyard of the high priest. And he was sitting with the officers, guards and servants and warm and warn 
warming himself at the fire. So while he's standing at a distance, this is Peter we're talking about, right? This is the one who said, kept on saying, I ain't going to leave you. I ain't going to deny you. I ain't going to die. You. I would die with you before I deny you, right? But he ran. Listen, it says, now the chief priests and the entire council, Sanhedrin, Jewish high court, were trying to obtain testimony. So now they're trying to get some testimony because, you know, all they need is two to three witnesses and it, it was be established as proof. All right. So it says here again, Jesus, which they could use to have him condemned and executed, but they were not finding any. So they wasn't finding any um, witnesses or testimonies. So it says that they was trying to find testimony against Jesus, right? So they was trying to find testimonies against Jesus, which they could use to have him condemned and executed. But they were not finding any. They wasn't finding anybody to testify. My God, my God. For many people were giving false testimony against him. Ain't that one of the commandments? You are not supposed to bear false witness. They were giving false testimony, family, against him. But then, I mean, but their testimonies were not consistent. Because you're lying. Because you're lying. They was trying to give false testimonies, but their testimonies were not consistent. For many people were giving false testimony, y'all. Look at that. Look at that. They were giving false testimonies against him, but their testimonies were not consistent. My God. Then it goes to say, some stood up and began to give false testimony against him, saying, we heard him say, I will destroy the temple, also known as the sanctuary, that was made with hands, and in three days I will build another one. I mean, I will build another made without hands. Woo-wee. Woo-wee. This is the testimony they was given. This is the testimony that they was given. My Lord, my God. We're going to keep reading. Not even in this respect was their testimony consistent. So they couldn't even get that straight. They said not even in this. Not even in this respect of them talking about, I will tear the temple down in three days, rebuild it with no hands. They couldn't even be consistent in that testimony, family. The high priest stood up and came forward and asked Jesus, have you no answer to give in response to what these men are testifying against you? But Jesus kept silent. What did he do? Jesus kept silent, family. This is so good. Lord, have mercy on my soul. But Jesus kept silent and gave no answer at all. He gave no answer at all. Again, the high priest was questioning him and saying to him, Are you the Christ? Are you the Christ? Come on. He questioned him. Are you the Christ? Who? The Messiah? The anointed one? the son of the blessed one this is what the the high priest is asking him right that, that's what the high priest is asking him jesus said i am and you will all see the son of man seated with an authority at the right hand of the power the father and coming with the clouds of heaven Woo! come on then tear then then tearing his robe to express his indignation the high priest said what further need do we have of witnesses come on we're gonna read that one more time we're gonna read that one more time what did jesus say jesus said because he asked them are you the christ the messiah the anointed one the son of the blessed one jesus said i am Ooh, hallelujah. He said, I am, and you will all see the Son of Man seated with authority at the right hand of power. Glory be to God. At the right hand of power. Glory be to God, the Father, and coming with the clouds of heaven. Glory, glory, glory. It says, then tearing his robe to express his indignation, the high priest said, what further need do we have of witnesses? Woo, woo. So they was like, we don't need no witnesses no more. He confessed with his own mouth. 
he confessed with his own mouth. So it says, you have heard the blasphemy. This is his claim to be the son of God. Ooh, and he was just said, you see how wicked you so wicked. And you claim to know God, but you don't even know him when he's right in front of you. You don't even know him when he's right in front of you, family. He said, you have heard the blasphemy. That is his claim to be the son of God. What is your decision? And they all condemned him to be guilty and deserving of death because he claimed to be the son of God, which he was. He was the son of God and he claimed to be the son of God. My Lord, my God, let's keep going. And some began to spit on him. Oh, 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 don't let me cry. Don't let me cry. And some began to spit on him and blindfold him and to beat him with their fist. Look what they're doing to my Jesus. And to say to him, prophesy by telling us who hit you listen you uh-uh uh-uh what uh-uh talking about prophesy let us know who hit you because you got a blindfold on and they and you punching on my jesus uh-uh whoo jesus jesus help me lord help me i'm getting i'm gonna get upset i'm about to get upset i'm about to get upset let me just start over because i just whoo i gotta take a breath and some begin to speak spit on him and blindfold him and beat him with their fist family and say to him prophesy by telling us who hit you listen to this foolishness then the officer took custody of him and struck him in the face you sucker hitting my jesus in the face struck him in the face y'all see this while Peter was down below in the courtyard, one of the servant girls of the high priest came. Lord, have mercy. This is so good. Okay, we almost done, family. I know this is long, but we good. This is good. Came, so, so it said, one of the servants in the courtyard, priest came to see him. And when she saw Peter warming himself, she looked intently at him and said, you were with Jesus, the Nazarene too. So she she recognized Peter. Peter was sitting there warming himself. She looked in the, in, intently at him and said, you were with Jesus, the Nazarene too. So this is, here's that first, here's that first denial about to start coming up. Peter was warming. She intently said to him, you was with Jesus of Nazarene too. My Lord, my God. But he denied it. There it is. That's number one. I'm going to put number one right here. Number one. That's a one, y'all. But you den but he denied it, saying, I neither nor I neither know nor understood what you are talking about. <laughs> Look at here. I I I'd rather die. I'm a I'm gonna die I'd rather die with you than to deny you. That ain't that what Peter said? But he denied him, family, saying, I neither know nor understand what you were talking about. So now he lying. He denying and he lying. Bars, okay? He was denying it and he was lying about it. He said, I don't even understand what you're talking about. You know full well what they're talking about, Peter. Stop lying. Stop lying. You're already denying. Now stop lying, okay? Then he went out of the courtyard to the porch. And a rooster crowed. Woo! And the rooster crowed. Come on, Jesus. Tell it like it is. He said, I surely say to you. I solemnly and assure you, before the rooster crows, you're going to deny me. Woo! <laughs> Glory be to God. Look at here. Let me let me just highlight all this whole, this whole thing is good. Y'all can't tell me this ain't good. I don't care how many times I read it. I don't care how many times I read it. I get the same feeling, if not even stronger. It says, the serving girl saw him and began once more to tell the bystanders, this man, he's one of them. <laughs> this man, he's one of them. Who they talking about? Peter. This man, he's one of them. What? One of who? The disciples. But again, he denied it. Number two. Number two, Peter. Number two, you denied. Number two. 
After a little while, the bystander again said to Peter, You are in fact one of them, for it is clear from your accent that you are a Galilean, a Galilean, too. Oh, I don't know if I'm saying that right. A Galilean? You are a Galilean, too. He said, I know for a fact you are in fact one of them by his accent, y'all, the way he was talking. The way he was talking, he said, she said, I know for a fact. That you are one of him, you are one of them. But again, he denied it. That was the second time. Ooh, glory be to God. Let's keep going. But again, he invoked the court. <laughs> now he cuts it. Now he cuts it. But again, to invoke a curse on himself and to swear an oath. I do not know this man. You are talking about. Listen. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to do it like this. Mm -mm -mm. I'm going to do this. Sorry, y'all. This is number one. This is number two denial. And this is number three denial. Well, I can see it better. I can see it better like that. That's how we're going to do that. Okay. But he began to invoke a curse on himself and to swear an oath. Listen swear an oath i do not know this man you are talking about stop lying peter stop lying and denying the lord this is what you don't want to do family okay this is what you don't want to do this is what you don't want to do immediately a rooster crowed <laughs> The second time, listen, listen, listen. Woo, glory be to God. Immediately, when? Immediately, when? Immediately, a rooster crow, just as Jesus said, the second time. And Peter remembered what Jesus said to him. Before a rooster crows twice, you will deny me three times. Whoa. And thinking of this, he began weeping in anguish. He just broke down in tears crying because he remembered what the Lord told him once he heard that crow. My Lord, my God. Y'all can't tell me this was good. We done. We done, family. We're done. We're done. We're done. That was so good. Hand clap, hand praise for the reading of the word. Glory be to God. So let's go on over to our... That was good. I enjoyed that. Like I was watching a movie. I'm trying to tell you. Okay, so here we got the meaning of communion. Let's go ahead and read this. I hope Joyce is on point. Because if she ain't, I ain't going <laughs> to finish it, okay? I just can't enforce no false doctrine. I love Joyce, but I just don't agree with everything that she teaches. But I love her. I love her. Here we go. The meaning of communion. It says, the scene in Mark 14, 24 is what we commonly refer to as the Last Supper. Jesus wanted to eat a final meal with his disciples and be strengthened in their fellowship before facing the agony that was ahead. During the last meal, he spoke prophetically, wait a minute, oh yeah, prophetically, instructing them to partake of his broken body and shed blood by eating and drinking the bread and wine. In Mark 14, 24, he made clear that his blood would seal and validate the new covenant. Then, I mean, they were to have with Almighty God. So this was the covenant, the New Testament. Today, we remember Jesus shed blood and broken body through our taking of communion. Glory be to God. Like many others, I received and participated in communion services for years without truly understanding what I was doing. I knew the bread and juice represented the, bo the body and the blood of the Lord Jesus. I knew he instructed that we eat it and drank it in remembrance of him. But communion has a much deeper and more glorious meaning. Come on. Um, Holy communion was never intended to be an empty ritual with little or no meaning for those participating in it first we take the bread jesus is the bread of life he is the word made flesh let me read that again jesus is the bread of life he is the word made 
flesh. Come on, somebody. As we partake of the bread, we take him as our living bread, the only source that can truly satisfy our hunger in life. I love that. Um, we remember what he has done for us. Then we take him as our living drink, the only source that can satisfy our thirst. As we drink of the cup, it is equivalent of sparkling blood or shedding blood. Okay, yeah. On the sacrifice of his body, it is, it is important that we take both the bread and the cup. We got to take what? Both. We got to take both the bread and the cup. If people attempt to remove the blood, they are removing the power, come on somebody, of the gospel. They are removing the power of the gospel. Communion can be, I mean, communion can and should be a fresh dedication of our lives to the Lord. A reminder of the blood covenant we have with God because Jesus stood in our place. He has great love for us. He took our sins upon himself and remembers them no more. His sacrifice on the cross made it possible for us to receive his salvation, his mercy, his grace, and favor. Come on, somebody. When, when you take communion, realize that Jesus has given you his best. Come on, let me read that again. When you take communion, realize that Jesus has given you his best. Remember that he shed his blood and gave his life for you. Communion is a time to examine your life and ask for forgiveness in areas where it is needed. Come on, let me read that one more time. Communion is a time to examine your life. Communion is a time to examine your life and ask for what? Forgiveness in areas where it is needed. It is also a good time to release your faith uh huh, and ask God for healing in your physical body as well as in every other area of your life. Come on, Joyce. Now, that was good. I could agree with that. Come on now. Thank you, Jesus. So let's go ahead and read this um, life point here. Let's read this life point. And it says, those of us who are leaders on any level at all may encounter what I call the Judas kiss test. This is the test of being betrayed by friends as happened to Jesus in Mark 14, 43 through 46. Years ago, I talked with a person who went through something that was emotionally hard because it involved rejection and betrayal by people this individual considered close trusted friends. I told this person the same thing I share with you now. What did she say? Let's see. Share with you now. There were certain there were certain things Jesus did for us that we should not have to go through. For example, he bore our sins so we don't so we do not have to bear them. But there are other things that Jesus went that Jesus went through and that we endure as an example for us things we will have to follow in his footsteps and go through. Betrayal is one of them. Come on, somebody. Betrayal is one of them. Frankly, I do not know how many leaders, people who have been in position of leadership for very long, who have not at one time or another been betrayed by someone they really loved, respected, and trusted. If and when that happens to you, do as Jesus did and stay focused on your purpose. Do what? Stay focused on your purpose. Forgive the offender and do not allow him or her to cause you to fail or delay in doing what God has called you to do. Glory be to God. That is it. So let's go on over to our devotion family facing failure facing failure glory be to god hallelujah okay family here we go here we go here we go facing failure let's read let's read we already know the foundational text we read it in mark 4 27 so we're going to read this all the way through one time without any commentary and then we're going to come back and read it a second time with the underlines all right so it says 
As you follow Jesus, you will face moments of great distress. At times it will seem that events conspire to cause you to stumble in your relationship with him. You do not initiate them, but they arise from opposition or the intensity of your circumstances. Nevertheless, <clears throat> failure is the end result. The disciples faced such fierce opposition to their Lord that they all failed him on the night Jesus was crucified. Peter boasted that he was incapable of forsaking Jesus. Yet Jesus assured the disciples even before their failure that it was inevitable. The scriptures had prophesied it. God always knew the disciples would fail him. I mean, God always knew the disciples would fail his son. He wasn't caught by surprise. He had made provision for their shortcomings, knowing he would eventually develop them into apostles who would fearlessly preach the gospel, perform miracles, and teach others. Come on, somebody. Later, when the rising Christ encountered Peter on the seashore, he did not ask Peter for a confession of his sin, but a confession of his love. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may fear that your failure has caught God by surprise. Perhaps you promised, like Peter, to stand with the Lord, but you failed. God was just as aware that you would fail him as he was with the original disciples. He has made provision to respond every time you stumble. Hallelujah! Don't think that somehow your failure are bigger or more complex than any God has dealt with. If you are facing challenges that seem overwhelming, don't be discouraged. God has already foreseen them and prepared for them. Come on, somebody. All right, y'all. Holy Spirit, have your way and teach us today. We're going to mark this thing on up. We're going to run through this and I'm going to let y'all go. Glory be to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. So let's go. It says here, as you follow Jesus you will face moments of great distress. You better understand that. You better understand that. As you follow Jesus, you will, you will, family, face moments of great distress, all right? So just understand that as part of this walk, we are in a full-fledged war. There's always, it's you in a war. You are in a war. It's not a cakewalk right? It's not a cakewalk. You are at war. So as you follow Jesus, guess what? You will face moments of great distress. It's inevitable. It's going to happen, right? I always say it's three things you're doing at all times. You either going into a challenge in the middle of one or coming out. Those are the three stages, okay? And they just continue back to back to back. You either going in, you in the middle, or you coming out. That's it. And that's, that's life. You're just going to keep repeating it. you in the middle of a challenge or a crisis. you 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 going into one. you in the middle of one. Or you coming out of one. Those are the stages. That's it. It says, at times it will seem that events conspire. That events conspire to cause you to stumble in your relationship with him. So it seems at times it will seem that events conspire, meaning coming against you, right? To cause you to stumble in your relationship with him. It says you do not initiate them. You don't initiate them. You don't walk into them on purpose, but they arise from opposition, from opposition or the intensity of your circumstances because you this is just like Paul they were so much under pressure they were scared their life was on the line they seen this stuff unfolding right before their eyes their heart was to stay with the Lord but fear kicked in they seen him get get taken away and they knew that he was about to be um, crucified so your circumstances you like okay why am I going through this hardship? Why did I lose this love? And why did I lose my job? Why did my um, child have to pass away? Why do I have cancer? So you're going through all these crises and things that you're just thinking is unbearable, right? And it's causing your relationship to stumble because you're feeling like, why me? But the question should be, why not you? Why not you? Why not you? 
right? You always want to say, why me? But why not you? Why not you, right? So that's the question. You ask, why not me, right? Because that's just another opportunity to show God self strong, right? That's not the time for you to walk away when you find out you got cancer. It's not the time to walk away when that loved one passes away. It's not the time to walk away when when everything is falling apart. That's the time you stand the strongest. These are tests, family. We got to understand these are tests and you're going to be tried. Are you going to pass? Or are you going to fall away and run and deny God and Jesus and say, this stuff don't work. God hates me because I'm going through this and I'm going through that and I'm sick and I'm this. No, family. This is the test. Are you praying? Are you worshiping in spite of all the things that you're going through, all the challenges that's coming to you? Because the Bible said, only those who endure to the end will be saved. If you can't endure, you can't be saved. It said only those who endure to the end will be saved. You better hold on with everything you got. Your soul depends on it. Your life depends on it. This too shall pass. And if you go away, you're going home to be the, with the glory. You don't turn away from God because stuff is happening haphazardly in your life. And it ain't really haphazardly. It can be God doing it or you doing it because you disobedient, you bringing stuff upon you, or it's just a test from God to see if you're going to deny him. Or are you going to stand strong and continue to worship and continue to praise? What are you going to do when your time comes of your testing? When you get tried in the fire to see if you really for God or you really against him? Come on, family. He already know that we that we weak. That's why he said, when you weak, you better say you strong. He told us what to do in our times of weakness. And he, we just read and did a study also that says, when you are weak, that's when I show myself the strongest. In your weakness, remember Paul said, in my weakness, he bragged on his weakness. He boasted on his weakness because that's when God shows up in your weakness. Come on, somebody. Don't get me preaching today. I'm not a preacher. I'm a teacher. Hallelujah. <laughs> Bars. Glory be to God. So it says things will conspire to cause you to stumble in your relationship with him. You do not initiate them, but they arise from what opposition things coming against you or not just the opposition, the intensity of your circumstances, right? You got your boss on your back. You lost your job. You're going through a divorce. Your kids is rebelling. It just seemed like, oh my God, I can't take this. I can't take this. But we always know God is not going to give us no more than we can bear. It's time for you to cast that care. Bars. Come on, somebody. On fire today. On fire today. Nevertheless, family, failure is the end result. Failure is the end result. You can't do this thing called life by yourself. I'm just going to tell you straight up. You can't do this thing called life by yourself. Why? Because the Lord is your life source. Without him, you're dead in spirit. Okay. You are dead. You can't do this thing called life without him because he is the bread of life. He is life. He is the life source. You need him to live. Come on, somebody. Glory be to God. Nevertheless, failure is the end result. It says the disciples face such fierce opposition. What fierce opposition to their Lord that they all failed him on the night Jesus was crucified. The time they needed Jesus. I mean, the time that Jesus needed them the most. They were sleep family. They couldn't even stay up for one hour. They couldn't even stay up for one hour to pray and watch, to pray and watch. He came back three times and that's significant too. I'm going to have to do a little deeper study on that because that was coming up. They watched Jesus came back three times and they would sleep every single time. And he said, enough of that. <laughs> Get up. Let's go. They're coming. They're here. They're coming. Let's go. Let's go. We got to move. And before they can even leave, because they wasn't on watch, here come Judas with the with the chief priests. Mm, mm, mm. But Jesus didn't do nothing because he knew the scriptures had to be fulfilled. My God, look at our Lord standing up for us when we can't even stand up for him. My Lord. It says Peter boasted that he was incapable of forsaking Jesus. 
He was say he was incapable of it. Lord, I'll never do that. I will never, they might do it. If they all fall away, I'm not, remember? Yet Jesus assured the disciples, even before their failure, that it was inevitable. He said, I know you. You're gonna fall away. You're gonna deny me. Listen, family. He said, I already know. But guess what? I still love you. I still want you. I'm still gonna fulfill my assignment. I'm still gonna fulfill my assignment because I've made provision, my God. I've made provision for you. I love you. I've made provision. You're going to fail me. You're going to fall short. Okay? You I just you just going to fall short. You can't even meet the standards that I put out here. But guess what? I've made provision. Glory be to That's a shouting moment. Hallelujah. That's a shouting moment. Glory be to God. This scripture has prophesied, hasn't it? Yes. This scripture has prophes prophesied. God always knew the disciples will fail his son. He knew it. He knew that the disciples was going to fail him, that they was going to fall asleep. He already knew it, family. He wasn't caught by surprise. He was not caught by surprise. He had made provision. Thank you, Jesus. He made provision for their what shortcomings. He said, we all fall short. None of us. Mankind, human beings, we all fall short. All of us, all of us, come on, all of us. Knowing he would eventually develop them into apostles, but he has a plan for your life, brothers and sisters. Come on, he has a plan for your life. He know you're gonna fall short, but guess what? He gonna use you anyway. He gonna use you anyway. He going to use he going to use that murderer. He going to use that thief. Come on somebody. He going he going to use that drug addict. Come on somebody. Come on. Y'all better talk to me today. Y'all better talk to me. He going to use that prostitute. Yes he will. Yes he will. We all fall short, but he still can use us. You better ask somebody. Everybody that Jesus used fell short. Including Abraham was a murderer. Come on. Paul was too. Come on. Come on now. Come on now. Come on. Come on. <laughs> Cletus. Come on. Everybody fell short. He can still use you. Yes, you. Yes, you, brother. Yes, you, sister. Yes, you. I'm talking to you. Yes, you. Yes, he can still use you, family. Let him. Let him. It's a beautiful thing. I'm telling you. Let him use you. Let him use you. If you have the um the gift of singing, you have the gift of prophecy, you have the gift of teaching, whatever it is, let him use you for his glory. You better. You better. Let him use you, family. Let him use you. Don't be afraid. Have faith. Let go and let God have his way in your life. It's going to be the best feeling that you can ever experience. I'm telling you, just let him have his way. Just let him have his way. Do it afraid. Do it afraid. Do it afraid. Come on, let's get to this. It says, who would fierce, fierce, fearlessly preach the gospel? He already knew they had shortcomings, right? But he knew that he was what going to eventually develop into apostles because he had a plan for their life. He already knew what they was going to be. He said, who would fearlessly preach? Come on. What they going to do? They was going to preach the gospel fearlessly, boldly, willing to die now because they knew what they had to do. They all died as martyrs. They all died as martyrs. You understand me? They said they did not deny him no more after that. They didn't deny him no more after that. You better ask somebody. Once he rose, ha, ah, and he'd seen them for them 40 days and he supped with them. He, they didn't deny him no more. They spoke boldly of Jesus Christ. Come on, somebody. They preached fearlessly the gospel. Woo, glory be to God. Hallelujah. They performed miracles in his name. Woo, and they taught others in, man, this is so good. This is so good. I'm getting fired up if y'all can't tell. I'm trying to calm it down. Calm it down. They was there, but God already knew they was going to fall short. He already knew their shortcomings. But he said, 
I'm going to use you anyway. Because he said he would eventually develop in them into apostles. They was going to be church starters. You hear me? I need you to start some churches up in here. Come on. I need y'all to take on the mantle and teach, continue in my name. Glory be to God. Do what I taught you. Don't add nothing to it. Don't take nothing away. Follow what I told you to do. Glory be to God. And do it fearlessly. Go out there and preach that gospel. Perform miracles and teach others. Glory be to God. Later, when he, later, when, when the risen Christ encountered Peter on the seashore, he did not ask Peter for a confession of his sin. Mm, 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 he didn't. He didn't. He did not ask Peter a confession of his sin. Whew, I'm fired up. Let me calm down. Ooh, that's, ooh, that's deep. Okay, a confession of his sin. Oh, I'm not going to use that. Confession of his sin. But what? A confession of his love. He asked Peter, do you love me, Peter? He was like, yeah, I love you. And he asked him again, do you love me, Peter? He was like, Lord, yeah, you know I love you. And he asked him again, do you love me, Peter? He said, Lord, you know. He was basically, you know all things. You know that I love you. But what did he do in that moment? He canceled every time he denied Jesus with love. Instead of him getting on him about his sin, he wiped out the three denials with the three loves. Do you love me? Yes. Canceled out that first denial. Do you love me? Yes. Canceled out that second denial. Do you love me? Yes. Canceled out the third denial. So he was made new. He was made new family. Whoo, glory be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. God, woo wee. You got to love him. You got to love him. It says, you may fear that your failure has caught, has caught God by surprise. No, ma'am. No, sir. No, ma'am. No, sir. You may fear. Don't fear. Fear not. God did not give us the spirit of fear. So fear not. Don't fear nothing but the Lord. That's the only thing that you should fear. It says, you may fear that your failure has caught God by, excuse me, surprise. Perhaps you promised, perhaps you made a promise to God like Peter did to stand with the Lord, but you failed. Something happened. You walked away. You stopped going to church. You stopped reading your word. You had a, you had a backsliding moment, right? Two or three months, maybe a year or two, three, four years, five years. But he called you back, family. All you had to do was repent and ask forgiveness. Rededicate yourself. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Woo. God was just as aware that you would fail. He knew that you was going to backslide. He knew you was going to go back to your old ways for a period of time. Just to remember, just to bring back to your remembrance. Whoo, glory be to God that you are a sinner in need of a savior. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. You are a sinner in need of a savior. Come on. He'll make you go back to your vomit. And then you'll be like, what am I doing like the prodigal child? What's going on? <laughs> what am I out here for? I have a, I, I can have a full-fledged relationship with the creator of this world. What am I doing? What am I doing out here in this world? Uh-uh. No, no, no. Let me go back home. I'm tripping. I'm being foolish right now. I'm being foolish right now. Let me... Let me come to my, what did it say? He came to himself. Let me come to myself. I'm out here tripping. I'm out here. I know better. My mama taught me better than this. Okay. I do not have to live like this. Father God, help us all, Lord. Woo. So it says, God was just as aware that you would fail, family. Him as he, him as he was with the original disciples. So God knows the beginning from the end. He already written a book, right? He has made provision, family, to respond to every time you stumble. Know that, understand that. 
forgive yourself because he's already forgiven you if you ask him now you gotta forgive you you gotta forgive you he's for he's he's forgiving you and guess what he gave you a bonus he forgot oh how good is that he forgot for his sake he don't want to remember that he don't really he don't want that all in his head he said i'm gonna not just forgive you i'm gonna forget it too so you better do the same family get up knock your dust up off your feet put on your full armor of god get your praise on and let the lord know i'm back okay i'm back i'm back to serve you lord with everything that i got i'm here to love you with my whole heart my whole mind my whole soul my all my strength come on family it's time to do this thing for real for real no more playing church it's not it's not time to play church it's time to get in a relationship with the lord sup with him love on him get to know him because you do not want him telling you i never knew you department for me you workers of iniquity you workers of lawlessness uh-uh no 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 you better get on the fast track and get back on the horse dust yourself off and let's get on the get in this word get in this word family he has made provision family to respond to what every time you stumble so stop stressing about that Woo! let god be god and you just be his child come to him like a child help me father in these areas help me to examine myself where do i need to grow where do i need to grow where do i need to grow where do i need to mature glory be to god don't think that somehow your failures come on family are bigger than are bigger or more complex than god has dealt with nothing is too big for god if anything god is too big for your problems right you can't say well i don't want to bother god with this you better come to god every single minute every single second you ain't bothering god you ain't bothering god that's what he wants to communicate with you daily he said acknowledge me in all his ways in all our ways we should be acknowledging god if he was going to be tired of us he wouldn't have told us to do that in all our ways that means what you're going to eat what you're going to drink what you're going to wear where you're going to live who you're going to marry who you're going to date what you're going to watch on tv what you're going to read what you're going to study all your ways all your ways that's talking to god all day long do you understand what that means? You're talking to him all day long. Why? Because you're allowing the Holy Spirit to lead and guide you. Come on, somebody. Come on. If he was going to be tired, he wouldn't have told us, acknowledge me in all your ways. He waiting to hear from you. Glory be to God. All right. If you are facing challenges, that seem overwhelming, don't be discouraged. Don't be discouraged. What should you do? What does the Bible tell you to do? It tells us to count it all joy. Follow the instruction. I know, I know, I know it's easier said than done. I know it looks like this. How you? How am I going to count it all joy that my, did my mama just died? My, my daddy just died. My child just died. How am I going to count it all joy I was just raped? How am I going to count it all joy I just lost my home? How am I going to count it all joy I just went through a divorce? How am I going to count it all? Count it all joy. At that point, what do you need to do? Lean not onto your own understanding, okay? You ain't got to understand it. Just do it like Nike. Just do it. It ain't working for you because you ain't doing it. You ain't doing it, family. Don't try to figure it out. Lean not onto your own understanding. Count it all joy. And watch God show up. And not just show up, show out. He going to show up and show out if you allow him to. My God, glory be to God. I know, family. You just got to do it. Just follow the instruction. He said, count it all joy when these fiery trials come to try you. Have you done that yet? No. So you can't say it don't work. 
You like you can't say it don't work. All you doing is murmuring, complaining, murmuring, complaining, murmuring, complaining, murmuring, complaining. He didn't tell you to do that. You going against, you're rebelling against the word of God. Rebellion is as witchcraft. You are in disobedience. You are sinning. Repent. <laughs> okay. And, and tell God, Lord, help me in this area. I need you. I don't know how to count this all joy. Right? Help me count this all joy. I'm going to lean not onto my understanding right now because this ain't making sense. I don't know how to do this. You better talk to him. Abba, Father, come on. Abba, Father, you better call on him. That's all I can tell you. Don't be discouraged. Don't be discouraged in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. God has already foreseen family. He has already foreseen them and prepared for them. Glory be to God. You y'all got me preaching today. Hallelujah. I ain't even that ain't what I do. <laughs> that ain't what I do. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to your name, Father. I just thank you, Lord. I just thank you, Father, for your love, for your grace, for your mercy. Glory be to God. Jesus. All right, family, I'm done. I'm done with y'all. I'm done. I'm done. I'm dropping the mic right now. Okay, I'm finished. I love you guys. Pray for me as I pray for you. Come on, family. We gonna always, what, face failure. We gonna face failure. But God has already made provision. He has already made provision for when we fall off the wagon, for when we backslide, for when we fail him, he's already made provision. You just repent, ask for forgiveness, get back on the fast track, love on your neighbor, and love on you some God, okay? That's it. That's all you got to do. I love you guys. I hope you guys have a blessed and beautiful week. Pray for me again as I pray for you, and I will see you all next Sunday if God spares life. Bye-bye now. Talk to you soon. Thank you.